could they seriously not get a picture of Brian T for this box? <laughs> Anyways, guys, Alex Khan here, and for today's video, we are going to take a look at this 124 scale die cast model. It's DK's Nissan 350Z. So, before I get into this video, I want to talk about how I got this uh, merchandise. So today I was at Universal Studios Florida. I was walking through the Fast and Furious Supercharged Merchandise Store when I looked in the, on the side of the store and I saw this little section and it had a DK's a 350Z from the movie uh, uh, Tokyo Drift. But uh, I was very floored when I saw it and I immediately picked it up. But yeah, anyways, uh, for this video, I'm going to quickly unbox this video. I'm going to show you a nice look at this car up close on the spinner. And then I'm going to talk about why this is my favorite car in the entire Fast and Furious franchise. Then I'm going to talk about some of the inaccuracies with this model. There are quite a few, to be honest. Um, and then I'm just going to uh, wrap this video up, giving you a conclusion, and then just give you my thoughts on this uh on this die cast. So let's go ahead and take this thing out of the box. I'm just gonna take off this tape over here. Aha, there we go. Ooh, this car has some pretty nice weight to it. So let's put it on the spinner then. Ugh. All right, so as the car spins around, you can see my, my favorite part of this car, and it's the uh, Scarab graphic on the driver's side. And again, I'm gonna talk more about the inaccuracies later on, uh, but this should be the driver's side, but on this model, they have the driver's side on, on the left hand, which is uh, uh, inaccurate. This is a Japanese car, and the movie takes place in Japan, and the character does drive on, on the right side. But again, I'll talk more about that later on. I just wanna show you this car as it spins around here. And you can see it's got this uh, wide body kit made by Veilside. This is the version 3. And here's you got the uh, carbon fiber hood, which is uh, black, and that part is correct. And as it spins around, I just want to say this is the 124 scale version. I prefer 118 scale. Unfortunately, the 118 scale version of this car is so inaccurate. Like, this one's inaccurate too, but this one is a lot more accurate than the 118th version. On the 124 scale version, the paint is a, a bit more correct. It's got a darker shade of gray, gray which in the movie, it's kind of a, a, a gun gray color. But on the 118 scale version, it's like a bright silver, and it, it just looks completely inaccurate. And um, also on the 118 scale version, as we see as this car comes around, uh, the wheels are all chrome on the 118 scale version. The reason why I like the 124 scale version is that the inside of the wheels are painted a darker shade of gray, which is just like a DK's uh, car. So I was really surprised at, at, at how bad the, the 118 scale version is, but usually 118 scale is a lot more, more detailed. Um, but these uh, wheels are correct. These wheels are called Andrew Racing Evolution 5 wheels. And I'll, I'll let it spin around a little bit more. Let me talk about why this car is my favorite from the entire Fast and Furious franchise. So the character who drives this car, that's DK or Takashi, played by the actor Brian T. He is the villain of Tokyo Drift. And what I like about this car, aside from its aesthetics, it's the way it was used in the movie. Uh, uh, Takashi, he drives this car nonstop, consistently through the entire movie. Usually in a Fast and Furious movie, the characters will switch cars constantly, but not DK, the Drift King. He drives this car, I think, in four separate scenes. The first time you see this car with DK is when uh, the main actor, when the main character, Sean, challenges DK to a race when he doesn't realize that racing in Japan, or at least in this case, was about drifting. That's why they called this guy the Drift King, because he's like the champion at it. So he appears in that scene with this car. And then he appears uh, later on when he's telling Sean to stay away from his girl. Like he pulls up in this car really aggressively and says, hey, stay away from my girl or else. And then you see a DK driving this car later on when he's chasing uh, Sean and Han. That's where they're running away from, uh, from DK and his thugs. So again, you see this car. 
And then finally, in the climactic race, you see a DK driving this car. So again, there's a lot of consistency with this car. And for me, that makes this this car, it gives it a lot of character. It makes it a five-star car, in my opinion, just because it's it's definitely uh, you know a part of of the the DK's uh, character. Again, in a lot of the Fast and Furious movies, the characters switch cars like like they're changing clothes. It's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, as this car spins around, I, I guess we can start talking about some of the inaccuracies. So let me go ahead and open up some of these doors here. And this is kind of cool that this stuff can all open up here. Yeah, I'm going to open this bad boy all the way up. So some of the inaccuracies here. Well, if you look at the, on the side here, now these brake calipers are supposed to be uh, stock Brembo, but the way they look on this car, they don't look like stock Brembo. I mean, they, they kind of pass as Brembo, but not what you would find on the uh, 2002 350Z. Now in Japan, this was known as the Fair Lady, but uh, on, of course on the box, this is marked as a 350Z uh, Nissan. Um, it's got the incorrect plate. Um, so it's going to spin around a little bit more. And as we get to the front of this car, we're, we're going to see what, um, what I'm talking about over here about in regards to the Nissan badging here. So Nissan would have been on the, on the stock version of this car. But for this version, since I said this was a Veilside uh, wide body kit, this would have had VS right here instead of Nissan. VS sta standing for uh, Vile Side. As this car spins around, you can start looking at the interior here. And here is a huge uh, pl problem with this car. They have the driver's side on the left side. That is a sin. This is from Tokyo Drift. The, 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 the driver's side should be on the right side. And I can't believe they, they made that omission. But uh, a lot of times with these... Uh, car uh, diecast makers they just take you know one of the pre-existing -exist models and then they just slap the same freaking interior inside i'm not really sure what the deal was but they could have went that extra mile and made this more correct um so aside from that uh, the interior should have a roll cage because the hero one car for this uh for this movie car had a roll cage and by the way for the movie they had 11 um uh, cars for dk because, you know, one was a hero car, and then you had a ton used for, for stunt cars. And this car, as I said, it appeared in a lot of scenes. So, honestly, the uh, the, the middle console looks fairly accurate, except for this little monitor there. Why is there a monitor that sits outside of the console? Now, on the uh, the hero version, there are two uh, video monitors. You know, one being on top, and then the other one being uh, that, that sits flushed with the console. But this one, it sits outside of the console. And I think that's ridiculous. And the problem here is, do you see this little joystick here? They make it look like he's playing video games on his car. That is not DK's character. Now, if you watch the first Fast and Furious movie, there was a character who was playing video games in his car. And that's the problem. This guy did not play video games in his car. So they went the extra mile to make this interior look inaccurate. So I hate that they did this. I might just get like a, a razor and just cut that console out. Maybe even tear off that monitor that sits down there. But this car is made for drifting. It's not made for, for AV, uh, you know, presentation. And that takes me to this other thing right here. Now, do you see right here in the middle between the, uh, the, the driver's uh, seat and the passenger seat? They have a nitrous bottle there. That is inaccurate too. Uh, in the movie, the nitrous bottle sat in the in the trunk. So speaking of the trunk, I've seen pictures of of the uh, the Hero One car that DK drove, and it did not have any of these ridiculous uh, you know audio systems. Did not have this freaking monitor right there. So the interior is it's a mess. This is the most inaccurate interior I've seen. It's, oh my gosh, I can't believe I put the driver's side on the wrong side. There's no roll cage. They should have a roll cage in here. A few more movie inaccuracies. I believe the uh, entire wing on the back of a DK's car should be black, but on, on this version, a lot of it appears to be gray. And also, it should say vile side on the, the rear of this car. And the steering wheel appears to be correct. The, the steering wheel is a uh, is, is a Sparco steering wheel that they added to uh, DK's 350Z. So at least that part's uh, accurate. As the car spins around, we can take a look under the hood. And again, this is what a $15 car, although I paid about $35 for it. Um, the, uh, 
the details are going to be a little bit uh, not too detailed, but based on the shape of the engine, it does appear to be uh, actually accurate. So on the 2002 350Z model, the engine would have been a VK35DE, and uh, based on the shape of this and all the details, it appears to be exactly that. So surprisingly, they at least got the, the engine correct. Despite all the inaccuracies on this uh, diecast model, I'm still very happy with this model. I, I still think it looks way better than the 118 scale version, where it's, it's even worse than what they did with this car. Uh, from the exterior, this car looks pretty darn good, aside from some you know, exterior uh, you know, subtle inaccuracies. Uh, that's okay. I, I still love the, the movie car, and I like that I have a little representative of that movie car. But yeah, in conclusion, you know, I, I want to know what you guys think of this car. And again, you know, I love this car. I, I think uh, Tokyo Drift is a, a highly underrated movie, even though it was the worst performing Fast and Furious movie at the box office. I, I, I think that was just mainly due to poor marketing. Like those previews of this were, were pretty bad. And the fact that, you know, Vin Diesel wasn't in this movie for that much and and the fact that Paul Walker wasn't in this movie, I think that turned off a lot of people who were expecting to see at least one of their main characters return. But uh, viewed objectively, this is a great movie for, you know, for car guys. Like, even if you're only into, like, American muscle, I, I think you would appreciate the focus on cars as opposed to the uh, focus on missions, such as what the later Fast and Furious movies are notorious for. Um, but yeah, I... I I, I think this car is, is really awesome because w whenever DK appears, like this car is, is almost in every scene that he's in it. And it, it's just weird, again, because in a lot of Fast and Furious movies, the, the characters switch cars like like it's nothing. But with DK, he always uses this car. And I think that helps uh, create this car as part of uh, DK's personality. So again, that's why this car is my absolute favorite car from the uh from the fast and furious franchise 